welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And that's it. There's literally no one else here. Yeah. The, few people who, the few people who watch us on YouTube, you know that no one's else here because when the video started, there was only two. And we're not cool enough to like jump someone in. For the audio listener, you've only heard two voices and it. it will be <laughs> unless a, a young person runs in the only two voices that they hear. That would be normal in your house and very, very concerning in mine. <laughs> yeah, if a young person shows up in your house, I have questions. Like, I have questions. <laughs> oh, shit. I mean, it is Halloween time, so it's, you know, spooky season, uh, but ghosts are in people. The ghosts are out. Uh, as always, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. Um, this is episode 91. 91. 91. When, when's Holy the crap. last time it was just the two of us oh I was last time it's just trying to jog my memory keep but talking i can search it, it so, has to be we there, must have like good well there have been like you list episodes in the more recent like without where it was just like robbie and me or robbie myself and joel yeah yeah that but that's our you know that's our larger bubble that's like uh, i i refer to them as off the road again contributors um, <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah you didn't know it's, we had uh, a name for him no um, i was gonna go with like wingmen but that wouldn't really stick yeah that's not because they're like you know we're all married man. so <laughs> i mean robbie's not but he's effectively married yes he is who yeah what, what can we what can we call our little I had robbie and ensemble william together i, I like contributors yeah. i don't like correspondence yeah. correspondence could be a good one yeah glucker the third N- time. knights of uh knights of Manny. the something table but I mean, none of us are noble enough to be called nice. Anyways, it's been Dude. a long freaking time since the two of us just sat down. It's been eight years later. <laughs> I'm still searching. Like it's nope. gotta be like in can I can I throw a guess out there? Yeah. For before you find it. I'm gonna guess episode eight was the last time that it was just two of us. Eight? Eight. Oh man. No. I don't know. I'm still looking. Oh, uh, episode 41. 41, shit. Okay. So episode Which 41 is... is the Hummer EV, and then I it talked about Utah the whole time. So it would have been more mm. recent, but you bowed out, and I told all of my Montana stuff to... I, I say you bowed to out. Joel, like yeah. You had stuff going on, and then <laughs> yeah. I told all my Montana Slightly stuff to Joel. Busy. Which is hilarious to have like the Australian guy come oh my on God. and be like, yes, this is good. <laughs> yeah, but Australia has some desert too, so it's not that far away. Right, well, I, I mean, talk about Montana, but yeah. Far away, but yeah, Montana. I, I was thinking Utah, but yeah. yeah Which I, Instagram and everything is starting to, or not Instagram, Facebook is starting to remind me that like, hey, you were in, my, you were in uh, Utah last year, this time. Mm-hmm. I was like, God damn it, Facebook. Like, <laughs> shut yourself down again. Yeah. Just uh, go away. Uh, so go back in time. Yeah. And we're still talking about Hummer EV and reviews just came out. So, <laughs> and there are a number of people who've driven it. We are in talks with a couple to come mm-hmm. on and yep. come to the show. Mm-hmm. One would be a never before seen guest, which would be yep. kind of fun. Um, first timer. First timer. Don't say the other thing. Um, but <laughs> let's start with the, the news of basically uh, yesterday and today is that maverick embargo listed and everybody talked about it everybody talked about it and everybody had almost entirely good things to say about it too which is reassuring i think there was a lot of skepticism coming back into the small quote-unquote small truck wars which we haven't seen in really a long time like it's been a long time since there were actually trucks you can call small and now that we have maverick and santa cruz and hopefully a few others coming on the horizon. I mean, the small truck wars are, are, are back. And Maverick came out with, I mean, did you read anything bad? I only heard good. I mean, I, I okay, I heard there are people who drove the 250 horsepower EcoBoost motor front wheel drive version had wheel spin off the line. Like, is that the 2.5 liter? Eh, no. No, I, um, I don't know. It's the two liter or the two five. I think the two five is the one paired with the hybrid. It's an NA two five. Am I right? Oh, okay. I have um, absolutely no idea. <laughs> this is great. Give me a second. <laughs> uh, but, my, my friend of the show, correspondent or author again, correspondent, Robbie DeGraff had some stuff up today on Twitter about 
Maverick. Off the road again, correspondent Rowdy Graf. Yeah. Coming through. I Hopefully like correspondence. Back on That's the show good. soon because he and I are supposed to be actually in the same location, which is also why mm-hmm. if I sound a little different tonight, I've used a different microphone and I'm hoping to travel with it. <laughs> <laughs> crossing state uh, lines. Definitely crossing state lines. So, um, Looks like in engine, yeah, the 2.5 liter is with the hybrid and so the NA2 two liter five. EcoBoost. Yeah. So it seems like the best engine uh, drivetrain setup is the all wheel drive two liter EcoBoost. Um, yes. That would minimize your wheel spin. Right. Because it's, it's Ford's intelligent Naturally. all wheel drive. So. Mm-hmm. so it's mostly front wheel drive until it's not front wheel drive. Yeah. It's got to be almost identical to the, the escape system that it's, it is an escape. It's an escape chassis. It's an escape. It's also kind of a little bit of a Bronco sport. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised if there was some kind of other Maverick down the line, a little bit more off-roady, but I, I would be so much more excited to see like a 300 horsepower or 320 horsepower Maverick ST, like hmm. on, on 18s or 17s with bigger brakes. That would be fun. That would be a cool truck. I they're not going to build it. But. No, they're not going to build it. Uh, they might eventually, but I, th- I thought I saw something today that had Bronco Sport sales eclipsing escape sales this month or last month. I got to say, there's a few people that I know, and I, I do everything I can to stay off Facebook. But in scrolling through Facebook, there's people I know from outside the car world, from like my personal life, that have bought Bronco Sports based on it looking like the way it does. And, you know, steered away from something like an escape purely based on that. And everybody comments, oh my God, that's amazing. I want that. I'm looking at that. How do you like it? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it's like its own entity. It's really just kind of coming into its own. How, how much is the Delta there? Um, I am looking at the wrong chart. (laughs) Cause this is only 2020. He gave me a 2020 analysis, and so Bronco Sport was only around for December. Oh. And so in December of 2020, they sold 5,000 Bronco Sports. In 2021, year to date, they sold 81,000, um, which is mm. not something to blink an eye at. Like, no, uh, 80. Yeah, that's a bunch of units for something. Let me come back. You know, in that space that uh, that is technically an alt. It's not a mainstream, you know, it's not Escape or CRV or RAV4 or CX5. It's a, it's inherently somewhat compromised compared to the others on its road going abilities. My good car, so, bad car searching skills tonight are so slow. <laughs> <laughs> that site is really amazing, like that they still managed to pull that off. And we reference them like fairly probably, frequently, probably once every five or six shows, but yeah, it's pretty good. So, anyway, so. Yeah, so, Maverick proves to be good. Is shocking. Tesla Model Y sold fifteen thousand units so far. That's okay. just interesting to me. Tesla Model Three is twelve thousand units. Bronco Sports is eleven thousand. Okay. I mean, car sales now are you know not exactly representative of what they would be in a normalized time or space or space time. Ford Edge is down to 6,700. Dude, the Ford Edge is like... Hey, professional couples, maximum of two kids. Yeah, and it's great for that. Yeah. But there's also 40 other options for exactly that. Yeah. Well, like, I I think about a lot of, like, XC60, XC40 Volvos, like... Oh, yeah. Dude, my aunt had, like, two Ford Edges and one of the Lincoln versions. They're still selling on the E-Series. I mean, we know that because we talked to you going off road. Yeah, they sold three thousand yeah. E series this year, and twenty five hundred were reservations for U joint. No, I don't know. I, uh, hope so. I wouldn't fucking hope so. I hope Bring so that U joint market down. Let's see so, if some of those things under fifty grand. Bronco Sport was eleven thousand six hundred and eighty six. What Escape was eleven thousand four hundred and sixty two. So they sold two hundred and twenty ish more. Bronco Sports than they did of escapes. I mean, realistically, if somebody walked up to you and said, Hi, I'm tangentially interested in cars. Should I buy an escape or a Bronco Sport? What would you tell them? I'd buy Bronco Sport. Uh, <laughs> right. So 
It's very, if you very, walk very into a easy. dealer, which are you going to buy? Anyways, that's enough Ford for tonight. And we're not talking about real Bronco because I don't think we really have any real Bronco stuff to talk about for probably the first time since the last time we did a solo show. I've seen a lot of people <laughs> like posting pictures of them. I've seen more around town. Like I think I'm up to like five yeah. or six on the road. I saw 392 Wrangler again the other day, which is cool. Like, Even better. All right. Customer Wrangler is like, it's not Customer an actual. Wrangler, yeah. Not an actual. Yeah. I don't know. I, I saw a Bronco up north. And it, it looked like a Bronco. There, that, that's it. Okay, moving on. Grand Cherokee. There is a new Grand Cherokee. Mm-hmm. And it's the short version of the long version because they decided to re- release the re- God damn it, I can't talk. My brain and my mouth are just not connected. Um, so they've released L. And now- Which one do you want to look at first here? What do you mean? Well, you have a Trailhawk version, right? Trail, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. They actually do look pretty distinct model to model. So throw one up on the screen and I'll, I'll run through it. Take your, it's dealer's oh, this choice. Is an odd photo. The photos are really odd. And the press launch thing, the video that they did was really, really bizarre. They, it was like as fake as fake gets with a thing caught in about them climbing lions back out in Utah. And it was just, it was like almost painful to watch, but anyways, so. so, Oh God. All right. You go first. Yeah. It doesn't look particularly good from that front angle that you're seeing here. It, it, they got the proportions perfectly right with the WK2 with the prior one. And then they like worsened it. it. It looks almost less distinctive as a Grand Cherokee because the grill and headlights have turned into one unit instead of the grill living as its own entity in the middle of the front end, which was the big distinguisher as, you know, it being Jeep. And here it just kind of looks like smushed. (laughs) I think that's a nice way to say it. Like, so design language wise, um, the between the two vehicles that are up here right now, like the the red one has eight LED fog lights, it's a and fog lights. the black one has a single fog light square. It looks like, and then like a bunch of black plastic. A lot of black plastic. The the red truck has this wide open grill, like that's a, what a hexagonal looking grill. Yeah. So in the middle, you can see the radar cruise thing, and then you, it has like two inputs under the fog lights that are also open but when you go to the black truck they're all closed off under the fog lights right. so for audio listeners the two that we're looking at in this press photo the right one is a four by e so the they they launched an electric grand cherokee or a hybrid blue hybrid toe. assist yeah and it has blue toe hooks and the blue accents the same way the wrangler four by e has them blah 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 the one on the left is either summit or overland or whatever the high-end fancy trim is and that one looks okay. To it's got a black roof, you know, it's got the red amount of chrome, it's got like almost BBS basket weave wheel looking wheels. But I think to the untrained eye, it could almost pass as the prior gen. Um, yeah. just because of the headlight treatment and the way the lower fascia is shaped. But the one on the right is they they there's actually going on. There's a lot going on, and they really like for the trailhawk in the WK2 versus the summit or whatever the high-end one was. Uh, it, it was just really just a matter of like the lower portion of the bumper and the colors being different. These are entirely different bumpers. And it uh, the, the one on the right just looks almost... You remember when the current Cherokee came out in yeah. like 2013? what 13? Yeah, it was like 2012, 2013, yeah. Shocked everybody. That's kind of what's happening here. Like, Because the just... headlights were lowered. Like, they flipped the headlights and, uh, like, day running and turn signal indicators. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. It's it, not, it's a, yeah. It's a lot of real estate for pretty small features. And, yeah. you know, the proportions are just wrong. The one thing that has me is, like, I'm assuming the, the black spot on the lower left or on the lower part of the front bumper of the red truck is radar cruise yes would presume so it looks like it's in a different spot on the other truck if it's also radar cruise there's also so much other like cladding 
cladding immediately below where it says is another strip of black plastic. Right. Like why, why couldn't it have just been integrated into that? It's so yeah. Anyways, um, I don't, I particularly don't like the black floating roof. It feels like they built a Nissan. It, it definitely does. That's just me. Look like that. It looks <laughs> that that's the same exact treatment as the pathfinder that I just had. Exactly. But, like, you know, but the inside. So, all right. So the exterior is, you know, okay. You want interior it's, now. It, yeah. The exterior, you be the judge. And then uh, I, I really just holding out hope for an SRT at this point, <laughs> but power the interior train. seems really nice. Interior is beautiful. There's a lot going on as well. I think they're trying to, I don't want to say they're trying too hard because, you know, the big claim for the prior generation was that it was the most awarded SUV of all time, blah, blah, blah. So they, they did have to push the envelope further than they could have just played it safe, but you know, it, everything is such a known entity in the SUV world at this point that they really did push. And it, it takes a lot of cues from Grand Wagoneer and Wagoneer, whatever the fuck the difference is between those two. <laughs> actually, I actually thought I saw one today that actually had a screen does in front of yeah, the passenger the, too. Yep. The, uh, the, the airbag deploy into the face, hopefully not. Well, I'm assuming the airbags yeah. out the top of the dash. Like they all are nowadays. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But okay, so just backing up powertrain. So the 4 by e is a two liter turbocharged gas engine and a hundred kilowatt electric motor. So it's 375 horsepower and 470 pound feet of torque. That's good. What but it only does 25 miles of range. So it's the same as the Wrangler. That that sucks. That's not great, but you know, most people only commute 40 miles round trip if they commute. So you can drive most of the way on electric or as they showed us and are very proud, you can off-road a little bit on electric. Um, other exciting engine stuff is the 5.7 Hemi's back. It's 357 and torque is probably around 370. I, I don't have specs. And the 3.6 liter V6 is still the base engine. Huzzah, that's the interior, that's the engine. And um, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're, there's, there's, there's so many different variants of this that they brought out to like hit the ground running with this thing. Right. That we could go so many places. I mean, you know, the Trailhawk's going to be a very good off-roader that will probably be comparable to, call it Defender or... Sure something in that vein off-road fucking nobody's going to take it off-road no you know that's the thing but how right. many defenders go off-road like most don't yeah not very many at all <laughs> at least i mean i'm sure there are i don't want to you know diminish the population that probably does wield those things but it there are not it's, a lot of uh, photo shoots with the L and the Grand Cherokee next to each other. I'm no, trying to get a comparative it, picture. <laughs> the L is particularly unattractive from that rear three-quarter angle. So they're probably trying to hide that. But it just looks like if you put it on a copy thing and push 80%. I kind of like the L, but I'm a weirdo. You would. <laughs> I don't know why I do, but like part of me is like, yeah, I, I would want a little bit bigger Grand Cherokee. But then just why not a Wagoneer? Because of the price tag they attach to the Wagoneer. Yeah, but the Wagoneer is like 65 and a Grand Cherokee L with all the stuff the Wagoneer gets is like 65. Right, then I'd pick the bigger one. Right, so, and you, then you get the truck chassis and instead of, you know, Grand Cherokee chassis. But who knows? Anyways, um, yeah, Trailhawk. I'm very much hoping that next week that I'm around the Wagoneer, Grand Wagoneer. You should be, and uh, you have some reporting to do if that yeah. is the case if i'm not what's up it was I'm great gonna, i'm gonna send an email <laughs> <laughs> if you're not an email will be sent um but yeah red toe hooks on the trail cock, cock hawk trail cock <laughs> it doesn't sound as good as track cock no it doesn't so oh. that's uh yeah that's that's grand cherokee i don't know there's a lot of pretty pictures of the thing charging out in monument valley under a solar thing you know like this 
beautiful angled solar array that says Jeep all over it, like things hiding the shade. Um, you know, the black floating roof really, for a while, it was a luxury thing. Remember when the, the Evoke came out and it had a contrast roof and it was like, oh, that's yeah. fancy. Now it, everybody's doing it. Like you can get a contrast roof on like a base level Nissan. It, it's kind of- say on a Sentra. <laughs> yeah, you, on a Sentra, on the Rogue Sport, on the Kicks. So it's played out. It. Uh, I really hope they have the option to- So is this Trailhawk then? Because it's got red toe hooks. Yeah, yeah, because it's got the weird, like, twenty thousand dollar looking wheels. Those are the same wheels that are on the Cherokee Trailhawk, or okay, at least emulate them, and they look cheap. Because everything here is the exact same as the four by E, except mm. those were blue. Hmm. So maybe they just maybe there's like two or three bumpers, and not like five. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It will be fun Thanks. to start to see them around town. And uh, speaking of Jeeps, my parents' Jeep went in with transmission issues. Did I tell you this? Yes, you have told me this, but I don't think you've told our listeners yet. Oh, I don't think I've mentioned this. So my my parents have a 2014 WK2 Grand Cherokee. It's a V8 Limited. Um, It it is a very nice vehicle. I think they have about 215,000 miles on it. They bought that unlimited or no it's, it's they call it unlimited but it's 99 years or 999,999 miles whichever happens first <laughs> the warranty expires uh they got some pretty severe transmission clunking when they were away on a vacation um limped it home brought it to the dealer that was july 15th or so when they initially brought it in and they still don't have it back it's still the dealer lord Dealer will not provide a loaner car, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, there's no rentals or anything. So they're just riding it out in my dad's truck. And yeah, it's been shitty. Um, they're just getting like, you know, conflicting information from the FC or Stellantis reps. And you know, Stellantis is like, wait, we didn't do this. It's somebody else. It's yeah. FCA. Well, no, I mean, they're, they're blaming supply chain issues. They're saying they, because they're replacing the, the whole transmission. You know, I was expecting it to be like a pressure pump or, you know, a, a some kind of controlling module or something and, and they just want to replace the whole box but yeah they keep changing their mind on delivery time but they said first week of october still nothing still nothing anyways that's that's the thrilling world of jeep right now and i have license plates for my jeep so Sweet. enough enough jeep stuff um can we talk about the frontier yes because i, I was prepping yes excellent timing so the rally is happening uh Rebel happens- rally well, by the time this comes out, it will have happened. Uh, have happened. I think for, for recording purposes, I think it's happening later this weekend. So, Okay. So, yeah. Um, Lynn and Sedona, prior guests, friends of show, they are competing or competed based on when, <laughs> based on time. Uh, they, they have a lightly, lightly modified Nissan Frontier. I think it has like a little bit of suspension lift and it's got KO2s and, and you know, different wheels i thought lynn's post was basically like all of the nismo off-road goodies are on yes. this truck like there, i don't think um, there's anything <laughs> i think there's a few things that aren't like there's there's some weird like metal bumpers okay that they don't have but you know like they're not bashing rocks on this this is like mostly sand is my impression but the livery is spectacular it's fantastic yeah it emulates the old hard body livery from the nissan race trucks from like the late 80s and early 90s side by side here we go it just fucking works it's so good and i I remember lynn saying that it was that we were gonna dig it and and we dig it they they did they did good they did absolutely fantastic so the classic nissan hard body race truck new frontier but then they took this Mm -hmm. and put it on the new frontier I, I love that hard body truck. Like fender flares. We don't need fender flares. Now no. everything's just like, what's the biggest flares we can put on this? Exactly. You know, <laughs> to like the TRX, like, like fucking five inches wider than a Do normal that. one. Okay. Side, sidebar. I saw a TRX the other day in traffic and was like, good Lord. Why is there a monster truck here? Yeah. Like, the guy was so big. They probably could have gone even crazier with it. Like it's not 
the fenders actually blend into the body kind of well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but still, it's just fucking obscene. So uh, I will point out, I see some KO2s on this Nissan. Yes, sir. And red toe hooks. Yeah, there are red toe hooks. But uh, Sedona and Lynn are actually legit, so I will not mock their red toe hooks. That's fair. And hopefully they don't have to and or didn't have to use them. Um, what is this next note that you put on here, which also ties into the Rebel Rally, but can you pronounce that oh my for gosh. me? I think it's Scrub Blade. So um, it, I saw something on LinkedIn today and it was like, Scrub Blade is the official wiper of the Rebel Rally. And I was like, what is a Scrub Blade? And so of course I went looking and it's like a dual bladed windshield wiper. So they're taking advice from the razors, the world of men's ra- and women's razors. Kind of. They're like adding, they're going to start adding rubber. So this is the official wiper of Rebel Rally. Um, I kind of want to know. Punch in on that. Uh, kind of. Because from that far, it would just look like a windshield wiper. Yeah. What so they're like, the fuck? it's like a weird serrated edge on the outside, but then like you get end up with two blades. Dear Scrub Blade, if you're listening or if someone knows somebody, yeah. I'm super interested to test this out because I get, I feel like I buy wipers and then three weeks later, they're streaks and I'm pissed. Like, and I know that like, I don't want to spend 50 bucks a wiper because that, that it's only six weeks and then they're streaks. Like, I just want something that works. <laughs> yeah, that's living, weird. It's yeah, living in a place yeah. with winter, and they they have different styles. Like this is a a very normal wiper. They have the more like, um, God, the only thing I can think to say is like a Rainex Latitude style, where it's like it doesn't have the the exoskeleton on the outside. It's mm-hmm. all like the even pressure across. Um, yeah, if somebody's yeah. got wiper advice, I'll take it. But these like these started at. 16 i think oh that's cheap that's like right but then like i wiper price i put in the sizes of the sequoias and it jumped up to like 24 but like <laughs> that's still not terrible like no it's not, not bad. 30 and if it bucks works, a wiper or 40 bucks a wiper it's it's like 20 something so i mean there's been so many companies that i claim to reinvent the wheel with wipers and ultimately it's just a slightly different variant of the same thing and this is actually the first like new wiper shit i've probably ever seen yeah it's a completely different application than what we're used to seeing so i'm very very curious uh but bring it on it was just kind of nice to promote a rebel rally sponsor too so yeah yeah dear scrub blade chris needs wipers yeah i want to know what's up it's going to be cold there soon he needs to be able to see for the sake of his children and that's (laughs) that is something that like you can buy nice wipers and the first winter precipitation will absolutely ruin them like even if you don't scrape them like you don't pull on them like you make them sure like no still after that just one piece of yeah. frozen ice in the windshield ruins the whole wiper dude percentage. i live and die by popping the wipers up in the winter yeah every single because i also haven't had a garage in three years and it was I don't have a vehicle where you bought could. a house but i can't fit the fucking jeep in it so i'm <laughs> smart <laughs> What's the, oh man, I had a vehicle I couldn't actually like raise the windshield wipers and I can't remember what that was now. Hopefully it's not the Suburban, which you will no, find out probably in the next like month. Uh, I I definitely had them up while road tripping to Montana. I know they come up. Oh, they went okay. up bugs that I murdered. Bugs. So I feel like I've talked Murder. about trying to raise the Suburban's front end for however many weeks in a row. I'm going to jump to my store real quick because it's going it. to... I finally, so I bought the Suburban. We drove it to Montana and back, 3,600 miles. We got home. There's no jack in the back of the truck. There's no tools in the back of the truck. We'd had any flat. There is a spare. I have located the spare. You don't think you could have just taken everybody and just pushed it up on its side? like we Not the quads? Suburban fully loaded cargo <laughs> box. Like, I mean. I'm fucking with you. The thir- the, my 13-year-old's pretty big. Like, he's 5'10", 180 now. So, like. <laughs> Jesus, he's bigger than me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I'm not that's a small fit person. Every, I fit in every car. I don't know. My that's, wife's tiny. Yeah. It's like, well, that was my, my favorite joke with him is he was, I was trying on insulated boots like two winters ago. And I asked the guy if they had a 12 and he was like, ha ha, I wear 12. And I was like, you're 13. You're not going to be wearing 12s forever. You're going to be buying shoes on the internet. Motherfucker. Good. Sorry. Luck. <laughs> <laughs> that won't get too fired up. Uh, special Go. order racing shoes. Go. Anyway. <laughs> 
I called the dealer I bought the truck for and I was like, hey, there's no jack in the truck. And they were like, so? And I was like, well, click, I'm done with you. I'm not, Mm -hmm. I'm not fighting this fight. I'll go to my local dealer because that one was like 30 minutes away. I went to my local dealer. I was like, hey, this is what's up. And they're like 140. And I was like, the other place quoted me like way more. They were like 180. And I was like, well, I'm definitely going to buy it. This is the, the, the pro tip I think most people don't understand is parts don't cost the same at every dealer. No, dealers buy parts at invoice and then mark them up based on their matrix. Yes. If you are a Toyota enthusiast, McGeorge Toyota of Virginia is the cheapest parts I have ever found. And shipping is less than or, in state taxes too. You know what else is the cheapest place in the country to buy TRD wheels and other TRD performance parts? Ooh, I don't know Toyota in Olathe, Kansas. Really? I shit you not. Well, that was, I think that one day you were, there was a deal or something. Pretty regularly, they come up as like the go-to place for First of all, basic it's pronounced, it's pronounced Ol- Olathe. Olathe? Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Fuck! This whole time I've been pronouncing it wrong. Olathe, wow. So it's I like, where's, that. By the, for, for the listener, that's where I live. I live it's a big yeah. town. We're good. Uh, but like every time we would travel for like when I taught the middle school, they'd be like, are you, you're from Olath? And I was like, no, Olath. we're from Olathe. Like it's pronounced dumb. <laughs> like everything in America is pronounced dumb. Like no, mm. nothing is pronounced the way it's spelled. Like, Mm-mm. by the way, there's only one other Olathe in the US and it's in Colorado. And good it's for five, them, you know. five, Like, I think it's 5,000 people. Like it's not a big, not a big place um yeah anyway completely off topic so i bought my jack today i'm going to use the jack to raise the front end enough to get my fat belly underneath it to get that lower balance off because it's driving me fucking insane the amount of curbs i hit that dumb shit on and so if if it's a tenth of an mpg even if it's one mpg i just don't care anymore it's it's gonna be probably like a half yeah so we'll we'll figure it out and also it'll make me like more comfortable if i want to go drive on a gravel road or mm-hmm. snow right three I inches mean, of snow can defeat the front balance like that's not good yeah and ultimately they put those things on there just for like you know that last tiny percent of gas mileage that it can get when i was looking at the as we were talking about the jeep like like that's exactly where my eyeball went and even those are like inconsequential. Like they are not. Yeah. They're not. Yeah, some automakers do it better than others. Like the lower air dam on the Colorado is really bad. Like well, I look at every GM pickup around me and I'm like, you just right there, you can just draw the line and pull that thing off and like, woo, six mm-hmm. inches more ground clearance. Six inches yep. is a big thing, but I ripped it off the avalanche. Not going to rip it. From what I can tell, <laughs> it's a series of bolts that are like this. Yeah. Like every three inches. Uh, there's like one, 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 one. Like one bolt's my, going down, one bolt's going up. Like oh, that's bizarre. Mine yeah. were just, it was like six, maybe eight. And yeah. it was like a eight millimeter bolt and just pull it right out. Done. Was it a 10 millimeter? I don't think so. I I it's been a while. That was probably I probably took that off the avalanche in like 2009. So I could be wrong. I do know that I put it back on at one point just to like see if the gas mileage went back up drastically and ended up just like zip tying most of it on because I broke it a little. Yeah. I'm trying to see if I can get a picture from the inside and everybody's pictures are from the outside. But yeah, there's a lot you can buy online if you want to buy them. I will sell somebody my scratched up air dam. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad you finished that sentence. <laughs> no, I'm not selling anybody in my truck. So kidney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no kidneys. I need both those. There's four well, kids. That's, Just that's in case. Good. At, at least, uh, at least this whole uh, air dam saga is coming to a, a hopeful end. The best was like talking to the guy about buying the jack, and he was just like, "Hold on, I have an issue with my system." I was like, "What?" And he's like, "Well, this stuff gets priced, and then like in our system, it like doubles it. So I'm gonna bring it back down to normal." And I was like, mm-hmm. "You mean doubles it?" He was like, "Well, your original total is 350 bucks." I was like, "Get the, get the fuck. fuck out of here! <laughs> like, that's I'm not paying any of that. Like, I'll see you later. No chance." Uh, okay, you have way better stories. So I Pretty, have. Do you want to jump to lot. the like the little coop that you had first? Because there's only two inches of that. So a little coop, the green and white one. The green and white one. The Defender. Do you want to talk about oh. the Defender first? <laughs> yes, sure. Okay. It's like little. It's, it's not, little it's, to me. It's, it's tiny. It's, it's 
Okay, so they dropped off the D90, um, the two-door Defender launch edition. What day is today? Tuesday? Yesterday. Uh, it The proportions make it look small and it's short overall, but it's not a small vehicle. Like once you're inside, there's a ton of room. And it, this one, is it has the optional jump seat in the front row. Right. <clears throat> which is really bizarre because it's a two-door with the extra seat option. So just kind of contradictory. Does the but, jump seat, is it like an old Chevy where it's like, if you fold it down, it's got cup holders? Yes, it's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. And if it's in the upright position, you cannot see anything out the rear view mirror to the point that they actually incorporated a digital rear view mirror. But <laughs> Sorry. yeah, it's, it's, it's the most interesting thing I've driven oh. in a very long time, but it's, you know, it's 400 horsepower um zf transmission it is comfortable and it rides great and it, it looks fucking awesome it's the first vehicle that i've had on loan ever that my wife got home and walked past it and walked inside and was like that thing is freaking hot like it no like i don't know it, if it's the you had a c8 corvette recently I, and she's not no, yeah. not bad and i the defender no. actively disliked the c8 but the yeah. defender and she doesn't, the interesting thing is she doesn't like the four-door Defender, but it's something about the way that B and C pillar will kind of morph into one. Yeah. It, it, it's it got this like 90s vibe to it and it's okay. really, really good in person. Um, the, the the green is called Pangea Green and it's, it's better in pictures than it is. I thought it would be great in person. It's just kind of like, it gets washed out in, in the clouds in the Northeast. Is every... Every Land yes. Rover Defender press vehicle is this color. I believe so. Or at least every single first edition, which is I'm pretty sure what all of the four doors were at first and now what all of the two doors are. Um, I, I This thing, you know, so the base on the two doors, like low 50s, this one's almost 65. Which is a new 35. I'm not 50's upset new 35. this being at 65. No, no. And, you know, and, and it could get away with being more expensive, I, 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 you know, the price jump to the one that with the V8 that's coming out is like thirty thousand dollars. Good lord, which is crazy because the the jump from you know base engine Wrangler to big engine Rubicon is uh, is like you're talking like forty to seventy five. So you know, same or forty five to seventy five. So same range, but it feels. You know, so I had that discovery recently, and this feels kind of like what the discovery should have been. Like right. it, it really feels like the big disco just shouldn't exist. The defender just should have been called discovery. They should have done a little bit less in the way of the gimmicky, you know, look at our heritage kind of bullshit, like the fucking um tread plates on the hood, which look yeah. cool, but have no actual function whatsoever. They're plastic um, too, right? I think they're they're entirely plastic and yeah. they used to be metal, but you know, that said, like I've, I've driven it 20 miles. I haven't off-roaded it. I haven't done anything except drive it back and forth, like to my allergy shots this morning into the house to drop some shit off. Um, but sharing my favorite version, it feels really, yes, that's exactly it. That's yeah. Base model on Steely's is, you know, it, it, low fifties sounds crazy, but this is, it's really different it really looks and it doesn't drive different like it, it drives almost exactly like the discovery and you know these these forced induction motors like kind of all have the same characteristics in the land rover products First like there's engine what did i say motor motor oh jesus <laughs> that would be something yeah the future yeah exactly uh, no they're, they're, they're surgy you know there's nothing not, like the throttle tip ins really like dead and then by the time you get into a little bit of the pedal it just surges and it takes off and it shifts and it surges and it feels like an old school engine um like an old turbo engine which just doesn't really vibe with the experience all that well but you know the money here goes to it being different and it, it really does feel different you know it, it really it feels unique and it feels like something that's just a total alt and a total sidestep and like walking a different parallel to normal like what a 
normal person would buy. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't buy one. It's there's. Sounds like you're in the market for one, man. I'm not. Uh, it's more <laughs> money than I can spend, especially having just bought a house. But it, you know, it, it's it's a really unique proposition, especially the two door. The four door is enormous. The two door has enough room in the back where you could easily climb in or put some kids in the back if you had to. Um, it's as close to like what a modern FJ cruiser would like. If somebody graduated from an FJ cruiser, they would buy this. You know, you know how like in the in the sports car, like the juvenile world, if you go from like if you get out of a GTI or an STI, you graduate to like a GLA AMG Mercedes or a Golf R. Yeah, this this feels like what you graduate to after you've done 15 years in an FJ. So it, it's a it's a really interesting truck. Um, I, I'm wow, gonna, that jump seat is so tall. It's so tall. It's like set back a little bit from the other two seats. Like inverse. You can, you can tell me if this style. is wrong. <laughs> no, that's right. That's okay. right. Yeah, it's like inverse McLaren in the front row, and so this is definitely like the commercial spec Defender oh, yeah. that I found through press photos because there's a grate and a wall right behind these. <laughs> <seats. So> that's <laughs> yeah, that's like yours. canine recovery vehicle one. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's it's got a digital mirror because that jump seat sticks up literally to the roof in the front row. So is this the back of the jump seat here? That's the back of the jump seat. Cup holders. And okay, so the the best thing about this, other than the way it looks, and the 20 is on this press thing. Like, I'm not a huge fan. That picture conveys the best part of it. The the interior is like, it's amazing. So I'm a big critic of interior materials and not just touch points, but like everything. Because, you know, like if you're going to spend... Days. 30 50 70 thousand dollars yeah and something you're going to spend literally days and months of your life in it should not just be made from like the same thing that tupperware is made from and the materials in this are like the best the best compilation of materials i've seen every surface is a different material they're all really like high quality grippy or rubberized or like durable feeling materials and it's just, it's great. Like all those recessed little cubbies are great. Um, the shifter is fucking an abomination and almost impossible to use. Uh, but well, yeah, no. It, four by four systems controlled through the multimedia. It is. But the the shifter itself to go from gear to gear is like, I, I miss the days just a standardized fucking notch back style shifter. Like everybody has to have their own thing. I can't tell you how much I still enjoy my column shifter on the suburban. It's so column nice. Shifters. It's and so you know nice. The, the crazy thing about column shifters too is like they open up the center console. Yeah. Which leads me to my main gripe with suburban is why the fuck are there not four cup holders within reach of the driver? There are only two. That makes That's, no sense. As a family of six, when we go mm. drive through or whatever, I like having four cup holders right near me. Like the Sequoia has four cup holders right near the driver. Yeah. No, the Highlander holders. had six. That's right that's near a the driver. A lot of cup holders. <laughs> no, but when like when Sam and I go on trips, I'll have a coffee and a water, and she'll have a coffee and a water. And yeah, somebody's usually, going in the like, door. Yeah, it was it was you know fun in the Miata, which was like okay, so the water bottles have to be really good ceiling water bottles so we can put them on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Behind the seat. <laughs> so it yeah. hits you in the head when you break hard. Exactly. Which, uh, yeah, that was my discussion about planes the other day. They were like, you got to put all your laptops away. And they're like, but every dude with an iPad gets to keep it out. Like, if we get hit in the right. head with iPads, we're all dead anyway. So why do we put <laughs> right. computers away? Like, yeah. I know it's first. Why don't you stash your stuff underneath you? Why? why? It's all legit. Anyway, okay. So Defenders. So Defender. You've liked what you've had so far. Yes. So most recently before this, so I'll I'll do the New Hampshire trip, trip quickly. I'm like tired of talking about this stupid trip already. So Nissan loaned me a Frontier Pro 4X. Hold on. We have to point out it's going to be different colors than what we previously showed people. <laughs> it will be. Um, I won't go into the story behind that, but the, the first truck oh. that was dropped off didn't have a hitch. 
the one that <laughs> was swapped in its place does, which is much needed for the purpose for which I had this. So I put 750 miles on this thing over uh, on a between the, the Friday drive, the like few miles on Saturday, and then the drive home on Sunday. So you drove to Denver. What's your point? <laughs> I drove to Gorham, New Hampshire, and then okay. Stark and back. But yeah, no, I, I wonder if I have the most miles on the new frontier of any journalist. I feel like oh, there's probably no a good chance. I don't know anybody else. That's probably Motor miles. Trend's like sitting on some like epic adventure yeah, right. that we don't know about yet. Like, right. I Big. love that we're racking on the guy who came to talk about it on our show. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Sorry, Johnny. Well, Johnny would say it's not electric. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part is that johnny didn't listen <laughs> no, no chance. but yeah so i spent some time in the frontier and by that i mean a lot of time um it's good it's a real viable tacoma competitor and that's you know needed because my favorite game to play with with the frontier is guess who was president when the last one got released yeah <laughs> so, um crap who was before george w no it was w Oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Clinton also, but. Oh my God, I'm old. Yeah. So anyway, so Frontier is is good. It's got a good engine. You know, the new V6 is good. The nine speed auto is good. Um, the seats are decent. The seat heaters are phenomenal. They have are the they best good? seat. Oh my God. Amazing seat heaters. Like I couldn't put them on high for more than like 10 minutes out of clip because it, it got painful wow which is impressive and it has a heated steering wheel so the long and the short of it is that this one that they gave me was like forty four thousand and change it had a, a couple option packages on it that were you know superfluous but is it just kind of a it's just kind of like a base truck it's not like a nismo interior no it was a pro 4x so like i think the does he get the weird one. seats the quilt the semi quilted seats yeah like yes quilted okay. in the top i got pro 4x interior now the you know the interior is a huge 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 jump up from the prior generation which is kind of like you know that's not a comparison it doesn't have that those seats were not okay. in the one i had because i think that's there there was a secondary option on the one i had that had like leather and the luxury package okay um but you know it's a good truck i mean forty four thousand dollars you can get away without the seven thousand dollar ultimate pack or whatever it was and, and just do get into it for under 40 or around 40 and it's a great truck it's more comfortable than the tacoma um the engine and transmission are better than tacoma's you know unfortunately it's auto only you can't get the six-speed manual anymore but yeah it um could you get the six-speed with the with the 2021 i think they killed it in 20 Oh, okay. or, or maybe 19. But anyways, the only manual transmission four-wheel drive pickup you can buy right now is the Tacoma. Um, but yeah, you know, the interior is fine. Um, there's some cheap shit, but like it's pickup. If you care about that stuff, you know, buy like not a pickup <laughs> or buy or spend more money. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. So yeah, is, the, is the four-wheel drive selector the twist knob? It is. Okay. Which is, you know, that's what Toyota does. The only manual engageable uh, transfer case levers that I can think of are the Forerunner and the Wrangler. I, I can't. I don't know if there's any other physical levers to engage four wheel drive right now. Not anymore. My my Forerunner was it was just four higher, four switch. low. It was still yeah. a switch. Like yeah. Um, FJ the, had the manual trans uh, transfer case lever. Yeah, but that stopped in 14 or 16. 14 was last year. But yeah, no, I, so it's got to be so Wrangler and ago. Forerunner. It is, dude. It, it is. feels like they just killed that last year. It's, it's seven years half ago. the last Frontier <laughs> cycle. Yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, so the, the Frontier, it's a good truck. Uh, you know, the long-term reliability is unproven with this new, new engine. But I, I don't know. It's, you know, if you're going to buy a Tacoma, it's worth cross-shopping it. Um, it's definitely more comfortable. It had some weird characteristics that I'm really hoping were just pre-pro like quirks, mm -hmm. like hit a road joint going around a corner at highway speed. It would like kick the steering wheel back the opposite direction. And you have to like wrestle it back in the lane a little bit, what? but yeah, it was just like some weird, like kickback type stuff. 
I don't, I didn't check the tire pressure. I didn't do anything, you know, it could have been just like a fluke. Um, and the crime to end all fucking crime. So it can tow 6,700 pounds. Okay. It has tow mode. Okay. It knows when you have the trailer hooked up because it has, you know, like a plug and everything. When you put the truck in, when you start the truck, the parking sensors come on. Okay. Remember the issue I had with the, the Pathfinder? Yeah, you couldn't reverse so, because it kept sensing the trailer behind you. When you, let's say you have a trailer attached, you put it in drive, rolling, you know, driving, come to stop, put it in reverse. It turns the sensor back on oh, no. every single time. So if you go from reverse to drive and turn the sensor off and go back to reverse, it turns the sensor back on. So every single time. Is it a button? Or it's a button. A, it's, okay. It's a button. It's right in front of the shifter. But in tow mode, you shouldn't have to turn off the backup sensor that automatically applies the brakes every fucking time. Yeah. It's like, like if you've selected something that says I am towing now. Yes. The backup sensor needs to be defeated. So let's hope that's pre pro issue. I hope so. Be a standard issue. Um, Joel Fetter yeah. had the same issue, identical issue with the, was it with this or no, it was with the Pathfinder. So it, you know, it, it's not, it could be a pre-pro fluke. I, I don't know. Um, Who's Joel Fetter again? He journalist writes for a bunch of outlets. I can't think for the life of me. And I'm sorry, Joel. Motor but authority? Motor authority. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he had the same issue, but that's it. Frontier is good. It's uh, it's worth a look. I'm really. Oh, he's internet brands. Yeah. That's it. So yeah, that's, that's Frontier. Um, I don't have much else to say about it <laughs> it was a truck, a truck. it was a truck it does it's actually truck probably things. a good thing that you don't have much to say about it because it meant mm -hmm. that it did what it did its job like yeah it towed a trailer towed a trailer pretty well it, it did okay with um probably around three thousand pounds behind it which it Man. should because that's half of its tow rating but the trees were changing for you weren't they yeah, so so northern New Hampshire. So tell us about so, the rest of your trip. All right, I'll do the rest of the trip quick. So drove up to New Hampshire for our kind of annual fall ATV ride up there. So the first thing we did on Friday was we did Mount Washington. So it used to be one day in the spring, one day in the fall that you could do Mount Washington on the quads. Now it is, they have like pretty much open access on weekdays. And Friday, October 1st was the last day of the year that you can go up the mountain. Unfortunately, the mountain was closed at the halfway mark because of a snow and ice storm at the top. <laughs> so, which is pictured by, here. <laughs> which is pictured there. And by the time we got to that halfway turnaround, it was fucking freezing. Like, it was like, I think it was like right around 30 degrees, but it was also sustained 35 mile per hour winds. Yeah, you had so, told me like your forecast was like 35 dude, with 35 mile an hour winds. I was like, I'm out. Like, oh my God, it was <laughs> so cold. And I had no gloves on because I was, you know, taking pictures of the whole thing. Yeah. But it was a cool experience. You know, it's, you don't see much at first because it's so covered by leaves, which is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. But by the time you get to any real vantage point, you know, like, you're at the halfway mark and there's yeah. snow everywhere. So we're going to go back again. Uh, that's not, that's not it. I don't know. But, I'm guessing. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, we're, we'll go there next. We're okay. going to go back again next year when it's, you know, not blizzarding at the top and hopefully actually run the whole thing. Sweet. So afterwards uh, I had the logistical nightmare to end all logistical nightmares, but eventually picked up the 2021 Polaris razor trail S 1000 premium pictured here um, we got out onto the trails of jericho state park in northern new hampshire for probably like an hour and a half on friday afternoon and had like the perfect friday afternoon it was like it was gorgeous um you know leaves changing 60 degrees light breeze it was just it was spectacular um you know no issues absolutely perfect time on the trail and it was great it was fantastic you know the 
the Trail S1000 is the modern version of my dad's 2016 okay. uh, Razor 1000S. So, you know, he's upgraded his, but this is effectively what you would buy if you're in the market for the same thing now. So it was pretty interesting to compare the two, having driven his like two weeks ago. But we, we got back into town. So you, you can drive on the roads up there legally uh, and you ride from Jericho to Gorham and it's, you know, you don't have to transit with the trucks. We're coming back into town and, and my dad says he hears like a, I was behind him and I could, I could hear like a, a metal snapping sound. And hey. he said he heard like a rubber release and then like metal clicking. And the only thing we could do was deduce that it was the left rear axle taking a shit. So he rode with me most of Saturday. My cousin rode with me the other portion of it. Okay. Um, Saturday morning, we got up and out early. We went up to Stark and hubbed out of Stark. And I think we did like 35 or 40 miles on Friday. And so we got up early Saturday, went up there. It was raining when I woke up. Yeah. It continued to rain the entire day. It didn't break. <laughs> I don't think it crossed like 44 degrees the whole time. And Good it was Lord. torrential, torrential rain 99% of the day with like rain shower conditions the other one percent and Ugh. like 15 to 25 mile per hour winds nonstop, and it was just absolutely brutal it's miserable uh, it was it was really rough like i and, feel like i could feel the cold through this image of just yeah, like so the stuff that, yeah it's a little mud but it's a little frozen on the side of the polaris there like yeah for perspective i was wearing two pairs of socks uh you know like a short sleeve shirt, a long sleeve shirt, a sweatshirt, a jacket, a waterproof like cover over that and waterproof like overall like waders. And I, it was raining so much that I soaked through everything by, by like <laughs> lunchtime, not even by the end of the day, by like lunchtime. Yeah. And then so, you just stuck with it. Yeah. So, and you have to ride it out because, you know, you end up 70 miles north and <laughs> there's no way back except on the trails yeah so we ended up doing like 150 miles maybe 140 i i can't remember i have a lot of I'm, off-road miles i that's the same that we did on the same trails a few months ago but it was the only difference the day we did that many miles a few months ago it was raining but it was like 65 degrees you know <laughs> so when you, know, you were like, on it were you on your quad then I was on the uh, Can-Am Outlander 650 oh, that's right. that yeah, yeah. Can-Am loaned me. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, 150 or 170 miles up there in a day is totally doable, but the conditions on Saturday were just like, it, it was, it was gnarly. And I don't say that lightly, you know, I, I have, I'm not like bragging or anything, but we were joking about, you know, the trope about if you have 10,000 hours into something, you're an expert. Uh, yeah. Like I've, I'm probably double or triple that in the off-roading. So it, the it was wet off-roading, miserable, miserable, miserable conditions. Everybody was cold. Everybody was tired. Like just one of those days where you're ready for it to be over like a good off-roading day. You want it to keep going, but this was one of those days where you just want it to be done. Yeah. So that's really it. I mean, you know, the razor, um, there were some issues with the razor brought on by the people that had it as a loan before me okay. that led to some less than ideal characteristics that I won't, I'm not going to dive into that just because I, I know it was a factor of mistreatment prior and not the machine itself because you know yeah. these are good machines they've worked out the bugs like they don't have these problems but you know it's it really is crazy what something like this can do out of the box this is a stock machine you know it's got walker evans racing shocks um 100 horsepower 27 inch tires like it can it'll pretty much do anything you need a side-by-side -side to do or want a side-by-side -side to do um they're they're not cheap oh god no. um <laughs> they're really not cheap and once you start going into the crazy xp stuff with the shocks mounted on the cage and the turbos like you're talking car prices but if you need a machine you know or you want a machine and and really are planning to just do trail stuff and 
don't want to have to fuck with anything aftermarket, you could get into one of these and, and be good. So I got more impressions coming. I'm still trying to make sense of everything that happened on Saturday. It was such, so much chaos. You said there was a, a Jack fiasco too. We had a Jack fiasco. Yeah. <laughs> A jack fiasco. So you broke a high lift? Is that what you said today? Yeah, the high lift jack that we had mounted on the inside of the bed of my dad's truck, uh, the spring and the release decided to malfunction. So it, yeah, it's going in the garbage. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to buy like a 12 ton bottle jack to replace it. It takes up less space and it seems like less to go wrong. Yeah. Um, and for our audience, when I told you I got my jack today, you were like a high lift. And I was like, yes, with my stock suburban bumpers, I bought a high lift. <laughs> I'm that much of an idiot. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. That's just where my brain goes. Because like, I don't know, high lift jacks have their place in the off-road world, but people are starting to move away from them because they, do. they are, I don't want to say hazardous, but they a lot of people misuse them. I'll get, and, I'll give a shout out to uh, Glucker's article. He just wrote an article about using a high lift jack and yep. how miserable it was. And he didn't use it as an actual jack. He used it as a come along, mm-hmm. which is worse. Which is, it's a great use for it, but it is, it, a, it takes a deceptive amount of strength to use it for that. Absolutely. We used a ratchet strap to pull the exhaust on my brother's Can-Am back into place to get it back on the hanger a couple of weeks ago. I was very proud of that one. That sounds like fun. <laughs> it was, it was, it was the response to his exhaust falling off of his quad while going uphill with a guy on a bike, biking behind him <laughs> a couple of days before. <laughs> that was fucking funny. Makes me think that only like the one time I used a Jack and I was like, I'm a genius. And it was putting a skid plate on my 04 TJ on the the fuel tank skid plate because those things hold it into place yeah Yeah, i got two of the bolts in and i was like you know i'm just gonna get the jack here these last two bolts were super easy after i got the jack Mm -hmm. i'm trying to hold it up with my legs while screwing was not working (laughs) Uh uh-uh never that was in my very early 20s at that point so i definitely had to learn (laughs) that was definitely one of those mistakes to learn things i did that i do that like that's the one of the best tricks in the book yeah especially for heavy fucking metal skid plates Exactly. Metal skid plates suck. So somehow I've turned on Spotify, but yet nothing's playing. So good. <laughs> uh, anyways, that's Some that's behind the got. scenes. Uh, yeah. If that's all you got, uh, the only other thing I had was we are approaching a hundred episodes. Uh, this Quickly. Is, this is ninety one. Who should we try to get? We've got we've got feelers out to a number of people. Mm-hmm. We kind of want to know what the what the audience would try to see. It might be Jeff to come back and tell us about his Land Rover competition. We good. Um, Bring it back to where it all started. And also, I think we're going to give Jeff a shout out. He has started re-recording the Hooniverse podcast. Not re-recording. He started recording again mm-hmm. the Hooniverse podcast, which is we're a member of the Hooniverse podcast network. Like without without his podcast, we don't exist. Or his website. Um, <laughs> or his website. Yeah. Which I might be working on a off the road again podcast website. Who knows? Ooh, maybe. I don't think I've told you about that yet. You didn't tell me any of this. I haven't told you about that. So, uh, yeah, you can rate and review this show on iTunes. People still do that. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. Uh, mm-hmm. It's hilarious when you subscribe to us on YouTube. It makes me giggle every time you do. So, thank you to all of you who have. Yeah. And we're picking um, up good views too. Good numbers and good views. So yeah, let's uh, our, let's keep our show rolling our downloads have um they've been hardy like it's like a 30 percent jump so um snowball effect but what's 30 percent more of zero mm, still zero uh no it's not that it's much better than that so uh yeah. you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on twitter twitter was the only thing that was still working the other day uh you can follow it on instagram too it's the real Hooniverse on instagram but that did not work um, and you can read what we write on Hooniverse, UTV driver, ATV rider, and everyday driver. Mm-hmm. I might, we might need to reorder those somehow. Um, just because it's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll figure that out. Uh, and I don't write anywhere. I got a different day job where I'm busy now. So I'm doing a lot of writing for them, but uh, my automotive writing has almost ground to a halt. Um, yeah, check out cards and bids still. Um, 
Ross is at no, not like the one from friends. And I'm at over Laney dad. Um, you can still find me on Twitter. If Instagram's not working. Um, <laughs> when Instagram's not working. Yes. Cause it only was... matters time. Man. It was kind of yeah, nice man. having everything dead. I loved it. It's the best. So it's the best. And then I was like, Oh shit. What if everything else crashes? Cause I didn't know it was well, intentional. Uh... Yeah, well, I think it was intentional. That's just my two cents of like, I'm not a big conspiracy guy, but like for them to crash their system the day that everyone's critique. Anyway, we're still recording. I mean, uh, yeah, that's it. That's the show. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <I> <laughs>